Good morning and welcome to worship. Worship today. This is our uh, ninth uh, meeting. It could be our tenth uh, worship virtually. And we pray that you have gathered together in your homes this morning. What a wonderful moment it is to come and meet the Lord. Amen. If you were here this morning, I would say give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We are so excited that God is so faithful and you and I are able to gather together and worship. As many of you know, this weekend was, was virtual graduation for many of our high school seniors. And they have celebrated in the process of, of just trying to reconcile what it means to graduate from high school virtually. And this morning, uh, I just want to recognize some of them um, Jessica Dixon, uh, Newton County High School, Brianna Glenn, uh, Newton High School, uh, Jessica Hillert, uh, Newton County High School, Jarrell Hells, Rockdale High School, Aaliyah Pinnell, uh, Union Grove High School, Nadera Blades, Union Grove High School, Tyler Davis, Union Grove High School, Brooke Tyler, Rockdale Magnet, Maya Golston, Eastside High School, Victoria Fountain, uh, one of the elite magnet schools. Uh, we praise God for Victoria Fountain. Uh, Liera Johnson, uh, Heritage High School. So let's congratulate all of our seniors Many of them had drive-by graduations. And you know, here at the Emanuel Church, uh, we are uh, very particular in how we celebrate with our high school students and our college students. And just stay tuned uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we will, uh, we've got something very special planned uh, for all of our graduates. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, job, job well done. Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you that you've allowed us to gather this morning, oh Father, in this place and in our homes as we settle down now and take our seats and our couches and in our comfortable chairs. And Father, as you orient us now toward your word, as the old prophet would say, there is a word from the Lord. And so we pray, O oh God, that you would speak to us now. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn in your Bibles this morning to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter knows something about ups and downs and challenges. And as Peter's ministry concludes... He pins some of these words, and you might ask, well, Pastor, who is he speaking to? In verse number one, it's, it's clear that his audience are the elders, the preachers. You know, difficult times are going to come. In verse one, for example, he says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am I also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. And it's a very important verse that, um, or words that he uses in verse number two. He says, feed the flock of God which are among you, taking the oversight thereof. We continue to feed the flock. The gospel of Jesus Christ has not been hampered by a virus. But we are reaching more people than we were when we were in the buildings. And we, we praise God for that. And so let's pick it up at verse number six. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. A reading from the King James. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he may devour. This is a very interesting text, and 
The New Living Translation puts it like this. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and your cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And so this morning, as we look at this text, I want to talk about courage to pray. Pastor Favors, uh, who is one of six people that are in the sanctuary this morning, he has been doing a fantastic job on Wednesday nights, uh, Bible study on prayer, the principle of prayer, the concept of prayer, and then we've been taking your prayer requests through chat. It's a great job there. And, and so this morning, I, I want to talk about courage to pray. And we're going to look at three things in the text. First, we're going to try to identify what is the substance of our prayers? What is the substance of our prayers? What are they made of? What's the makeup of our prayers? And then secondly, we're going to look at what is the method of our prayers? I don't know about you, but I've been praying more during this time. I met one member in supermarket and grocery store a number of weeks ago, and she says, Pastor, I haven't had so much time as I do now, and I'm spending more time with the Lord. I'm spending more time reading my Bible. I'm spending more time talking with the Lord. So what's the method of our, of our prayers? Is there some secret recipe? Is there, se is there some secret code? And then lastly, what's the reason for our prayers? Why do we pray? Well, for some might say, during this time, Pastor, it's obvious why we're praying. Well, let's look at what Peter is saying about prayer. What's the substance? Notice verse number 7. He says, cast all your cares upon him. Cast. It's, it's an action that you and I have to take. Our world is very complex at the moment. We are faced with many things that seem beyond our ability to, first of all, control, secondly, to impact. And, and, and here it is, Peter, talking to these preachers. And he's telling them, listen, cast all your cares upon him. So, so, so what does it mean to cast? The, the, the word has two parts. It means cast plus upon. The word means to throw. It, it means to lay something before someone else. It means you take what, what you have and you take it off and you lay it down. It has the idea of, of, of throwing clothes on an animal for riding. Melanie and I uh, went horseback riding uh, for one of our wedding anniversaries and, and, and the owners of, of the horse uh, farm took saddles and they threw those upon the horse so that we might be able to ride to cast upon it's an arrow's tense and, and it means to complete the action it, it doesn't mean to partially throw but it's a completed action the word uh, i preached on this before the word was used of of jesus in luke chapter 19 Verse 35, verse 33 says, And as they were losing the coat, loosening the coat, this is Jesus getting ready to ride into Jerusalem, the people will see him on that Friday and they'll lay their coats down before Jesus, their garments. Why loose the coat? Verse 34. And, and they said, The Lord hath need. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat. So Jesus could sat upon 
could sit upon the animal. They brought the coat to Jesus and they threw their coats on the animal. They did not throw pieces of their coats, but they threw all of their coat. Can I get a witness? The text says, casting all your cares, all of your worries, cares, King James uses the word cares, all your worries and cares before God. What did they throw? They threw the worries. Now, before we dissect what that means, just let me say that that's hard to do. It's, it's, it's hard to take it off and lay it down. It's hard to take fear off and lay it down. It's hard to be among the 40 million Americans unemployed and take the weight of that and lay it down. It's, it's hard to do that. It's hard to lay down the stress of being in the house with the spouse and the kids and everything that is associated with that. It causes anxiety. It causes worry. And the word he's using here is, is, is anxiety. It's, it's, it's worry. The, the, the word means to divide or to draw into different directions. And isn't that exactly what worry does? I mean, don't you feel guilty about worry? Don't you feel guilty? You know, the Lord is in control. I, I know he's in control. I, I know that the Lord is, is oh, preacher, going to make a way out of no way. I, I know God's going to do that. But somehow, I'm still weighted with worry. It's, it's pulling on me. The word worry here, it describes a state of being pulled apart. He's talking about circumstances that are difficult. And we find ourselves being pulled apart by those circumstances. They can easily dominate our mind. They can easily dominate who we are in Jesus Christ. These are life issues that you and I have to deal with. Now, why is this so important? It's important because fear can have a significant effect upon our walk with Jesus Christ. Fear can immobilize us. It can freeze us. And then we'll look at just a moment at, at the end of the sermon what that lion does and, and his characteristics but 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 for right now let's just focus on fear and anxiety what it is it brings us under bondage and we don't like that we feel guilty about that Isaiah chapter 51 I'm gonna read this in one of the alternative translations he says I, yes, I am the one who comforts you. So why are you afraid of mere humans? Who wither like the grass and disappear, verse 13. Yet you have forgotten the Lord, your creator. The one who stretched out the sky like a canopy. Don't you love that? And laid the foundation of the earth. Will you remain in constant dread of, of human oppressors? Will you continue to fear the anger of your enemies? When we fear, what should we do? Because we all track down that path. I love what David said about, about fear, the cure for it. In Psalm 27, David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. 
Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host encamp against me, all around me, my heart will not fear, though war rise against me. In spite of this, I shall be confident. Because fear and uncertainty can, can choke us. We should cast them upon the Lord. That's the substance of our prayer. But how about the method? Is there some secret code to this? Verse 8 in the King James says, Be sober, be vigilant. The New Living Translation says, Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy. The word here, uh, be sober. The, the, the word here is used figuratively. It, it, it means to be free from, from every mental and spiritual intoxication. The idea is to be calm and to be collected, to, 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 to have self-control and to be well-balanced, to be clear-headed. We had our town hall last Tuesday and trying to message to the congregation when we will reopen campus activities. We're evaluating that every week and, 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 and we don't have a fixed date. You know, we, we were told on Friday at about 5 o'clock that churches were open, that worship was open. I've got some witnesses in, in homes and different places right now that are hearing these words, and we don't have to be told that the Lord is open for business. I wish I had somebody. He's open now. You ought to see the people coming to the food pantry and Sister Tara and her team every week. I, I, I looked out and, and the cars were wrapped around the building. The ministry is open. Small groups are open. Marriage class is open. Singles class is open. Small group on Sunday is open. The gospel of Jesus Christ is still being preached around the globe. But Satan and the circumstances want us to be controlled by them. Them being the circumstance. They want us to be intoxicated by the circumstances. You know what it means to be intoxicated. Something else is taking over control. The, 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 the word here is, 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 is aorist tense. It's imperative. It means a command. We are told to be sober. That's a command. And the mood of the word means urgent action. Peter is saying, you must do this now. Keep your heads clear. I don't think I gave this scripture to the guys, but, but, but it's in your Bible first. Thessalonians 5, 6. So then let us not sleep as others do. But let us be alert and sober, same word. But since we are of the day, let us be sober. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love and, 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 and a helmet, as a helmet, and, and the hope of salvation. This is what Timothy says about it. 2 Timothy 4, 5. Same words used. But you be sober in all things. If you were sober on March the 10th, that was the day before, I'm looking at Joshua to help me with these dates, but uh, if you were sober on March the 21st, the day before we went to virtual services, then you ought to be sober now.
you, you got to be sober. We, we, we got to be sober. But you be sober in all things, endure, endure hardship. Timothy says in verse number 5 of chapter 4, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Peter even says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Be sober. So in summary, the application is that you and I should have proper exercise of our minds. It is a state of mind in which the individual has complete self-control. You're able to see things without worry. He says, be sober. But, but not only be sober, but be on alert. Did you see that? Watching. Be on alert. It's a very interesting word. It means without sleep. It's two words put together. One is without plus sleep. It literally means if you're on guard, don't go to sleep. It means sleepless or to be awake or to cease sleep away. To be in a constant state of readiness and vigilance. As you know, our daycare is still in the state of closure. There are many regulations and uh, CDC regulations and, you know, COVID-19 things that we have to do and, and uh, Sister Melanie and, and our daycare director is, is working on operational readiness by a certain date. Be operationally ready so that when we do decide to turn the switch on, we're ready to go. We've been vigilant, alertly watchful, especially to avoid danger. Be on alert. And we can kind of imagine this in our own minds, but the word was used in secular Greek to describe people carefully crossing a river while stepping on slippery stones. You see, if you didn't pay strict attention to your steps, you would end up in the water. So the idea is to stay vigilant and alert and cautious. We must be alert. We must be sober. And the reason is, attack and uncontrolled circumstances surround us. Remember, the word is Action, casting is something we have to do. That's something you have to do. Something I have to do. The Lord's not going to take your worry from you and cast it. No, 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 no. You got to take it. This is hard to do. That's why when we don't do it, we feel guilty. We, we'll talk about that in a moment. It, uh, Satan attacks us because, because come on, you... You're in church every week. You, you should be beyond being afraid. You should be beyond. You should be beyond that. Here's the reason. Thirdly, adversary the devil is as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The New Living Translation says, the devil, he, he prowls around like a roaring lion. You know, I was thinking about this earlier, and you know, Melanie and, and Ashley and Stephanie are home 
having worship on their 65-inch Sony TV. That's technology. They're in the keeping room. Well, sometimes I'll try to sneak up on Melanie. I'm in my room and, or the bedroom, and I try to sneak up. And she'll say, Eric, is that you? That's not the prowling that he's talking about here. Let's look at it. John, in John Revelation chapter 2, let's kind of define who, who this is. He says the, that, that the devil is a slanderer. He accuses the brethren. And he carries out that task day and night. He's at the throne before the Lord accusing us. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Paul says that he is, he is capable of firing missiles, fiery missiles into our minds. His weapons can cause us to doubt God prompting these self-defeating uh, thoughts and spirits that we have. He, 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 he ever seeks to accuse us, to cause guilt to pile up on our account. But thanks be to God that our account is filled with grace and mercy. And it's filled with grace and mercy because he is a vigilant adversary. The word here comes from two words. It, it, it means against. He is against us. He. Two words, sorry. Anti. Against. The word is used first. The word was used as an opponent in a lawsuit. Then it came to mean an adversary or an enemy without reference to legal requirements. Just make up stuff. An adversary is one who opposes or resists. He's against us. It's adversary. Sometimes in corporate, an employee, an employer might get to a state to where legal counsel will say, we are in an adversarial condition. That means two opposing forces are now against each other. Well, who's against us? The devil. Diabolos. That word has two bits to it. Love this. It means between plus to throw. Remember, he's one who utters false charges. One who misrepresents the truth. And his purpose is, is to defame or to cause harm. The word is used 37 times in the New Testament. And it's critical for, us, critical for us to understand what this means between the throw. It's a picture of what the devil does. His role is to divide husbands and wives between throw, to throw between. His purpose is to divide the child and the parent, to divide you and the church, to divide you and the Lord. But you and I must resist that very evil purpose of Satan because the text says he's, he's the adversary, the devil, definitely, he's the devil. Now notice what he does, how he does it. He's, he's a roaring lion. The text says, as a roaring lion. 
Not that he is a roaring lion, but it's a figure of speech. Peter is comparing two things here. He's, he's, he's drawing a picture of a comparison between the lion and the devil. The lion, who is he? What does he do? He's a predator. He seeks to plunder and to pillage. His goal is to cause injury. His goal is to tear apart. He's a roaring lion. This is what Vincent says about it. He said the word denotes the howl of a beast with fierce hunger to devour. The word means to drink down. It literally means to drink down, to swallow completely it means to cause something to pass from the mouth to the stomach to gulp to gulp down what's the application here Peter's point is that the lion doesn't just want to paw and scratch no he wants to chew up and swallow down his goal is not to scratch he's seeking to devour us completely by destroying our faith teachers principals administrators students preachers deacons leaders moms and dads he wants to destroy. He wants to cause or to set forth a path for us to seek from walking with the Lord. Let me read this to you as I conclude. Grant writes this about a lion. He says, this lion produces a howling or a roaring sound. This lion uses his roar to frighten his game. By his roar, he immobilizes his victims. His roar is a weapon. What the devil cannot accomplish through allurement, he tries to achieve through dread. What we see. Lions usually range near 600 pounds, standing four feet high. They run 20 feet per bounce. That's about a 100-yard dash in five seconds. They are totally unpredictable. They were trying to, impact, to attack for, for no apparent reason. They, they have extremely powerful voices. They, they, they bring fear to a believer. A roaring lion intimidates by his roar. The devil intimidates by fear. He casts fear into the weak Christians because... That will intimidate them from a life of faith. As a lion in the wild ceases or chases a herd of gazelles and, and runs down the weak of the herd. So the devil usually catches the weak Christian first. In the framework of our lives, in the framework of this, of this earth and this globe sets forth for that. Christians first because he freezes them by fear. Fear incapacitates us from moving ahead with our Christian walk with the Lord. Peter says, cast your worries upon the Lord. Be sober. Be vigilant. 
Have a clear head. Clear mind. Because there's a strong adversary against us. So this word today, I want to encourage you to pray. 